StarCast 5, presented by CarShield, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, Tennessee at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Loaded with stage shows including Renee Paquette's Sessions with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, Soraya, Turning the Page, The Horsemen reunite on stage for one last ride, and Bret Hart's look back at 30 years later on his SummerSlam Classic. And of course, StarCast will be capped off by Ric Flair's Last Match. Follow the story leading up to the last match over at RicFlair'sLastMatch.com. Tickets and information available at StarCast.com. Take a quick look at this Dynamite show here. I thought this show was awesome. I'll do the quick rundown. We can talk details here in a moment. But uh, if you did not see it, I would go out of your way to watch this Dynamite. The opener was John Moxley and Roosh. And this freaking match was awesome. And I thought the match would be pretty good because John Moxley is incapable of having a bad match these days. But uh, you know, Roosh, he sometimes can, uh, sometimes doesn't want to sell. Sometimes, you know. But man, these guys are two peas in a pod. They were perfect opponents for each other, and man, they went in there and they just pummeled each other. And they had a couple of good spots at the end where, like, Andrade tried to interfere, but it was, uh, but Moxley still kicked out. And then finally, he went for his kick. He missed it. Moxley hit a uh, Death Rider, kicked out of that, and then uh, went for the rear naked and the bulldog choke. And, uh, and Rouge went out. This match absolutely ruled. And then afterwards, Chris Jericho came out with the Jericho Appreciation Society including Anna J.A.S., as she is calling herself, who got to speak a little bit. And Jericho has challenged Moxley to an interim title match on the show in two weeks. And Moxley accepted but said, I don't want this BS sports entertainment Jericho with a thousand trademarks. I want the guy from the Super J Cup. Those tapes I traded that I ordered for the back of magazines. I want the Lionheart Chris Jericho. It's a great promo. This opening segment from start to finish was great. They announced the AEW World Trios titles. There will be a tournament. The new champions will be crowned at All Out. And already on the show, they were teasing that the Young Bucks will be getting a partner for this six-man tag team tournament. So, in fact, as I mentioned to everybody a couple of weeks ago, you're not getting... The Young Bucks winning the tag titles back to do that match with FTR. That's all done and over with. And they're going to be moving on here to the six-man titles. We had Ricky Starks versus Danhausen. Ricky Starks almost squashes him. Danhausen got one spot where Ricky Starks ran to the buckle and sold his neck. But then Ricky Spears him, pins him, and then he issues another open challenge. He promises he will stay there for it this week. Out comes Hook. And the place goes crazy. They go about three minutes. Hook beats him with the Taz Mission, the Red Rum. Place absolutely lost it when Hook won this title. And Starks is all sad, but he gives Hook a fist bump. Hook leaves. They go to commercial and come back. Starks is in the ring holding his neck. He cuts his promo about all he's done for the FTW title, and no one else did it, and no one believed in him. And it's just the most fiery babyface promo. And suddenly Hobbs lays him out from behind with a lariat. Beats him up, leaves him for dead with a spine buster. This segment, from start to finish, was awesome. We got a title change. We got Hook winning his first title. We got the Ricky Starks babyface turn. We got the heel turn for Hobbs. Everything about this was a total home run. We have the Acclaim hyping up a match with the Gun Club. Sammy Guevara beat Dante Martin. It was a fun, it was a fun match. They didn't have a lot of time, but they did all sorts of high flying. And Dante tried the double springboard, missed. Guevara then hit a double springboard cutter and pinned him, hit the GTH. And then uh, they were setting him up for the 630 when uh, Sky Blue, who I totally forgot about, and if you saw the show, you could probably figure out why. She did virtually nothing when she accompanied Dante to ringside. She tries to uh, make the save. Anna Jay runs down. Eddie Kingston Ortiz and Ruby Soho make the save. So it's fun action. We had some segments setting up matches for Rampage on Friday. I'll see if I can get Fauntleroy in here today. We'll see if that works. Then Jungle Boy comes out for a promo. He cuts the best promo of his life. 
where he basically said, I don't know why this Christian was so mad that I threw him out of the Battle Royal. It was a bonus for one match. Like, you've been in this business forever. You should have money. Or maybe you needed that money because of your divorce. And the crowd goes, what? And then Jungle Boy winks and goes like this to Christian's ex-wife. And so then, you know, uh, Christian gets on the big screen as Jungle Boy's talking about having to bury his own father. He's practically in tears. And Christian does his promo trying to get Luchasaurus to turn on him, saying, I would have made you a star. Instead, you're this guy's lap dog. And they go back and forth, and Christian says, you know what? I don't need to insult your dead father anymore because pretty soon you're going to be cozying up next to him. I know all your secrets, and I'm going to prey on your weaknesses. So, man, they're going all in on this Jungle Boy versus Christian segment here. And Jungle Boy was great, and I presume they're going to hold it off for another month and do a pay-per-view match, but that was great. We had the Young Bucks backstage, and uh, Brandon Cutler tells him about the trio's titles. They don't want him as a partner, but, oh, they stumble into the hangman. And they're all awkward and nervous, and Matt's about to say, you know, we've been wanting to talk to you for a while, when up comes the dark order to wish hangman a happy birthday. And it's all awkward, and the Bucks are, ah, we'll talk about it later, and they, they wander off. So who will be the partner of the Young Bucks? They have not announced it yet, but... Tony, Shiv- or, uh, Tony Khan, for months and months and months and months and months, said, I am not bringing back the six-man, or I'm not debuting the six-man titles until Kenny Omega can come back. The fact that they've announced the, the trio's titles, the fact that the finals are at all out, tells me, and I'm not reporting this because I don't know, but putting two and two together, my guess is Kenny Omega's back at any time. So I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know who he's going to team with. I mean, you know, Hangman's been on the phone with somebody of late. So it'll be interesting to see how they set this up. They did announce that the Undisputed Elite are back together on TV next week. Uh, Let a lot of people think Adam Cole's cleared. He is not cleared. He's uh, he's there to do an appearance. And I don't know what the situation is with with, uh, Kyle O'Reilly either. But they're all going to be on TV but uh, that does not mean that everybody is cleared. We had Sir Strickland beating Tony Nese and Mark Sterling when he pinned Sterling, and then they did an angle where Josh Woods beat up Keith Lee. So it looks like Josh Woods and Tony Nese versus Swerve and Keith Lee for the tag titles is coming up here. Darby Allen's going to be facing Brody King in a coffin match. So I'm sure he'll get his win back there. Thunder Rosa, Miyu Yamashita. It was a little bumpy there at the beginning, But overall, I thought this was a pretty good match. And I thought Thunder Rosa looked better here than she has in a while. She did a lot more lucha, and she did a lot more technical wrestling. And I think that she's better doing that than just your traditional American pro wrestling style. So I thought this was a pretty good match. She got the win. Fire Thunder Driver retained her title. And uh, apparently this person was there live, said it was shaky live. It was shaky on TV, too. But overall, I thought it ended up all right. Next week... Dynamite, Undisputed Elite Return, Thunderstorm versus Dr. Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter in a tag team match. Can Britt and Jamie get only the second win ever together as a team? And Christian Cage versus Matt Hardy. And then, August 10th, AEW Quake by the Lake is what they're calling it. John Moxley, Chris Jericho for the interim title. Then the main event, my... God, this match. Daniel Garcia and Brian Danielson had just the best match. Danielson just beat the hell out of this guy. He pummeled him. He just... And then finally he comes off the top with a drop kick and he sells his brain. Because he's coming off the... uh, They didn't announce a concussion. But it was abundantly clear watching the show he's coming off a concussion. And I know some people didn't like it. Because, you know, you're you're doing a storyline built around concussions. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is people come back from injuries of every, every conceivable body part. And they work it into the story of the match. And he decided he was going to work his brain injury into the story of this match. And uh, he sells his head. He sells his head. He gets DDT'd on the outside. But finally he's able to make a big comeback. But a hand comes out from under the ring. 
It distracts Danielson long enough that he turns around and gets pile-driven onto his head again. Daniel Garcia puts him in his sharpshooter, and he sits back, he sits back, and Danielson fights, and the place is going crazy, and Brian Danielson passes out. Daniel Garcia beats Brian Danielson via referee stoppage. The biggest win of Garcia's career. The fans, like, their reaction of just shock, it was it was pretty much incredible. This is from a guy that in WWE, all he did was lose to people. But they protect him enough here that this came off as a massive win for Daniel Garcia. Monumental finish here. And then uh, the Jericho Appreciation Society celebrated afterwards. So... Excellent, excellent show, top to bottom. One of the best dynamites in God only knows how long. I concur wholeheartedly. I mean, I I really, with the exception, and look, I know their fans are going to love it, and I know what it all builds up to, and I know what they mean. The Young Bucks, the whole thing with Hangman Page where it's like a parody Of, like, a sitcom of, like, you know, everybody getting back together again. Like, I know it's going to work. And in some ways, I get a kick out of it. But, like, if that's, like, to me, the lamest thing on the show for the most part, I mean, it. how great is that? Moxley and Roosh were made for each other. There needs to be a DraftKings, like, over-under on when Moxley's going to blade. The hook... Stark's Hobbs segment was perfect. I, Anna Jay with Jericho is going to benefit like Sammy Guevara did. So there were so many good things that took place. That Great show. This was the best thing on the show. And uh, the show was all downhill from there. So uh, I guess I can continue on. To uh, Dana Brooke beat Becky Lynch. <laughs> And that, my friends, is Monday Night Raw. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.